Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Legacy Velocitron Speedia 500 Collection Deluxe Class Autobot Cosmos. This has got to be one of the most exciting entries into this Velocitron subline along with Override. Both of those figures are in fact complete brand new moulds and we haven't as of yet seen them in the main line so definitely really excited to touch base with this chubby little space dude in just a second but to kick things off we'll very quickly go over the all new packaging and this looks awesome. I I think this is one of my favourite box designs that we've seen from the mainline in quite a few years and I really love the return to them actually packaging the Transformers in their alt modes. For me it just creates a lot more mystery in terms of how that robot mode is going to turn out and it does definitely throw me back to some of the older live action movie days. Now as far as the artwork is concerned I think the colour deco on this looks awesome. I really love the artwork. We've got Cosmos in both robot mode as well as here in the UFO mode at the top. As we take a look at this section we do actually get a product shot of the figure in the alt mode and as we spin our attention to to the back we get some cool images of Cosmos in both robot mode as well as here in the shuttle mode. So overall an amazing package design and I really hope that we can see something like this in the future mainline. Now as we actually take a look at Cosmos himself considering he comes packaged in alt mode that's exactly where we'll start this review off and overall I actually think this guy's really cool. Definitely very distinctive. Cosmos always had one of the most original designs out of all of the Transformers in the original 80s series and I really do think this is a very nice representation of the character. Now personally when I saw some of the official images for this guy I did think the command deck looked a little too big and whilst in person I still do think it's slightly too large it's definitely a lot better looking in hand and overall I think the paintwork for this figure is immaculate we've got a really nice dark green highlight going basically around the entire bottom section here of the shuttle mode we do get some metallic silver highlights for the front sadly they haven't stamped on the Autobot logo like we're seeing here on the back of the box I imagine they thought it looked rather strange to have basically two logos side by side to one another but consider in the show I do believe the logo was placed here that would have been something that I would have liked to have seen but other than that I think the paintwork has turned out really nicely as we come around here to the back you can see sculpted just as well as some of the previous War for Cybertron and Legacy figures definitely got a pretty decent amount of surface detail we do get what appear to be the thrusters here along the side and I love the detail that we've got here for this section now this will become the front chest piece when in robot mode but the paintwork on this is really impressive I love the logo I love the silver the blue and some of these buttons and details and as we come here to the top I love this big massive red button I just want to push it it looks super awesome and the sculpt work as well as just the shade of green they've used for the plastic I also think is pretty nicely done of course we get some yellow bleeding through but for a mainline deluxe overall I think this guy's turned out great and as we just come here to the underside you can see how the arms do become the sides with the legs taking up the middle section so definitely a really nicely done looking shuttle now as far as accessories go considering he's the flag bearer of Velocitron he does include a flag which I think has got some nice checkered detail here for the front. It has just been cast out of white plastic I want to say but it can actually double as a blaster so you can basically just pop this section off and whilst it is very basic in design I do think it is good that we can actually give this guy a weapon as personally I'm not a massive fan of the flag and we do get some nice detail here for the barrel section. Now as far as the weapon storage goes you do have a few options so you can peg it here in the back and this is also where the flight stand adapter can peg into but we simply do just snap that in there. From a front-on perspective, I do think this looks slightly strange, so what I personally like to do is just take the gun and peg it into the mech tech ports that we have on either side of the figure. So overall, definitely a really nicely done looking shuttle. I do just wish, however, that this command deck could have been just ever so slightly smaller. Turning to some comparisons, here we have Cosmos alongside the UFO version of Deluxe Class Bumblebee, and you can see scale-wise, they're pretty much on par with one another. One thing that did surprise me is Cosmos is incredibly hefty. I wasn't expecting him to be as thick and as chunky as he actually is he really does feel pretty substantial in hand and nowhere near as cheap and as hollow feeling as I was expecting so in terms of Bumblebee and Cosmos this is definitely the heavier out of the two but as you guys can see in terms of a scale perspective I think these here are pretty nicely paired and here we have him alongside some of the more recently released mini bots such as Cliffjumper, Warpath, Bumblebee and Huffer and just to give you guys a side by side comparison here he is alongside Cliffjumper, Warpath and I know there'll be some wonder as to whether or not these two in particular share similar engineering and personally I don't think they do. The only area of which is vaguely familiar would be the way the head flips out of this central section but I'll showcase that in just a second but as you guys can see definitely a lot smaller here in alt mode when compared to Warpath. Here we have him next to the Vault Wagon Bumblebee and finally to round things off 
here he is alongside Huffer. Now as we come to the transformation, surprisingly not too difficult, but certainly a little more complex than I was expecting. So to begin with, you'll want to flip here to the underside, take the arms and just detach those like so. And I'd recommend just rotating them down just to get them out of the way. We can then take what will become the hip skirt and hinge these sections forwards. They do actually peg into the side of the leg for transformation, so just hinge this section up. And now what you'll want to do is take the rear part of the UFO mode and actually pull it outwards. As you guys can see, there is this attachment. So what I would recommend doing would be to just wriggle it left to right ever so slightly, which will detach it from this section. So as you guys can see, that will extend outwards. And then what we can do is drop the hips down and bring this piece forwards, which will actually snap into this piece just like so. Fold the hip skirts down, detach the front of the toes, come around here to the back and just hinge these sections forwards. These pieces will come around to the back and will actually snap into place, basically becoming the heel spurs here for robot mode. And you'll want to do the exact same here for this side. So just bring this around, snap that section there into place. You'll then want to rotate this entire assembly upwards. Now this piece will actually slide into two grooves here and here. So just snap this here into place. And then this slot will slide here into this tab. So snap that in there. And then what will happen is these shoulder pieces, which are on the pin joints, will come up and over and will actually latch over the top here of this section. So just clip that in there. Do the same here for this side. Snap that into place, take the hands, hinge these sections out to the sides, and do the same here for this side. And for some finishing touches, and arguably the coolest step of conversion, would be to take this centerpiece and basically dip this section down, which will rotate upwards. The head will then pop out, and we can just rotate that around. And here we have Cosmos fully transformed up into his pretty cool looking robot mode. And overall, I think this guy looks great. For an exclusive figure, he's actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting. And it is just a shame that he is exclusive to Walmart, as he'll no doubt become super scalped, much like we've seen with the Netflix. Netflix, Bumblebee and Soundwave so if you can find him at retail definitely jump on it sooner rather than later but overall a really cool looking figure and as you guys could see from that transformation a complete brand new mold he really doesn't borrow any of the previous engineering as seen on either the UFO Bumblebee or the Kingdom Warpath now as we take a look here at the robot mode the design I think is amazing they've really done a great job in capturing the very chunky squat proportions that we saw in the original show and surprisingly he's actually been painted a lot better than I was expecting so as we take a look here at the head this entire thing has basically been painted from the ground upwards so you can see a really nice yellow used there for the mouthpiece we've got some blue for the eyes and basically the rest of the head has been completely coated out of this very thick very premium feeling metallic red paint overall i think that looks amazing and we've also got some pretty nice sculpt work going on for this neck region of course this does flip and rotate around for transformation so i thought that was quite a nice attention to detail like we saw in the shuttle mode here we have what would be the command deck now becoming the torso and the paint just looks as great as it did in that other mode so I can kind of excuse as to why perhaps it was a little too big when in UFO mode as it did have to suit the proportions here for the robot mode and overall I think it's very nicely done now the arms are by far my favorite part of the design about Cosmos I just love the way they look they're very abstract very different when in comparison to some of the other transformers and I really like the way this figure in particular looks so we get a nice shade of yellow here for both the forearm and for the top of the shoulder some really nice sculpt work I'm not the biggest fan of the hollow void that we've got here for the inside but it really doesn't bother me nowhere near as much as some of the other deluxe figures i'm not too sure whether that's because it does actually slope inwards instead of just being one dead square block we do get some nice skull work here for the hands and what i imagine would be the exhaust pipes for the ufo mode now becoming these almost blasters when in robot mode so that's really nicely done as we come around here to the legs i like the green plastic that we've got here the contrast with the yellow just works so nicely we do get the hip skirts which have also got some nice surface detailing on them and just overall all of this looks great and surprisingly he actually isn't that hollow there's a little bit of waffling for the inside section here of the thigh but as we come around here to the back for the most part he's actually pretty filled out and as i mentioned previously he is quite a chunky hefty feeling figure they really didn't cheap out at all and then as we take a look here at the design of the feet i also think this too for the most part has turned out really nicely done and backpack management wise i think they've done an excellent job this also looks decent we do get the flight stand adapter as well as a 
Fight Tech port. So yeah, a really nice looking robot mode. By far one of my personal favourites, not only from this Velocitron line, but definitely from Legacy as a whole. Now articulation wise, this was also another area which surprised me, especially considering just how chunky this guy is. So for the head is on a ball joint, which allows him to look up to that far as well as down to a great degree. It can also tilt side to side and rotate left to right we do get a rotation here at the shoulder which can rotate the full 360 although it does have a tendency to become detached here once you push it past a certain point we do get a hinge joint here out to the side for the shoulder which goes to an amazing range as well as a rotation where i presume the elbow would be 90 degree bend there sadly no form of wrist rotation and that's something that i definitely think they could have found a way to have engineered but nevertheless as we could take a look here at the waist i was very surprised to see that we get a completely uncompromised full 360. That is super cool. These sections can hinge out to the sides to allow the legs to kick outwards. They can kick forwards, backwards, rotate at the thigh. They also have a 90 degree bend here at the knee. And finally, in the Legacy slash War for Cybertron tradition, we also do get some pretty decent pivot going in and out. So overall, robot mode for Cosmos definitely turned out great. And just as a whole, I really do think this is a solid release for the Velocitron subline. As we bring back in the accessory, as you guys can see, considering he's the flag bearer of the race on Velocitron you can just slide the barrel in to create that flag bearer look which personally whilst I think looks decent you're always going to want to have your Autobots displayed on the shelf with their firepower so we can just pop the flag off and take this section peg that into place and I know at least for me this is how I'll be displaying this guy on the shelf it's just a shame that the blaster looks slightly uninspired when in comparison to this really unique and original looking design that we've got here for the robot mode comparison wise here for robot mode we have cost most compared alongside the UFO version of Bumblebee and I know originally they actually intended to take this Bumblebee and retool it into Cosmos and I'm actually so glad that they decided against that and did just give us a brand new mold as I really don't think they would have been able to get the proportions as accurate as they have done here with this new figure but as you guys can see despite them being pretty decently matched in terms of alt mode size here for robot mode it's a completely different story Cosmos is a very chunky and hefty looking figure as you would expect as we just take a look at them from a front on perspective he's almost done double the size of Bumblebee in terms of the width and as we just take a look here at the back as you guys can see really nicely done looking deluxe in my opinion but I know you will want to see how he actually stacks up alongside some of the other mini bots so here we have him next to the Netflix Volkswagen Bumblebee, Cliffjumper, Huffer and finally Warpath so as you guys can see very different in terms of robot mode design and personally I don't think they share any steps of conversion be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below but at least as far as how their robot modes turn out they are incredibly different so suffice to say he's definitely not a massive reworking or retool of Warpath whatsoever. And here we have him alongside the Earthrise Optimus Prime, Kingdom slash Legacy Blaster, Earthrise Willjack, and of course, Ironhide. And so, some final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Velocitron Collection Deluxe Class Cosmos. In all, this is a really nicely done figure. I think the UFO, for the most part, ticks pretty much all of the boxes that I would expect. I maybe wished that the command deck could have been ever so slightly smaller, but considering it does form the torso for the robot mode, I imagine that it would have thrown off a few of the proportions there. And as you guys all know, I would much rather sacrifice the alt mode over the robot mode and in all it really doesn't look that bad at all it is just a smidge too big for my liking but the details are all on point i think the design of the ufo mode is very nicely done and the way he transforms is really cool it's definitely a very fun conversion involved to an extent definitely a little more involved than i was expecting but certainly not too difficult and then when we actually get into the robot mode i think that is where this figure massively shines this is probably one of the nicest done cosmos figures that we've seen hasbro put out and i really do think for the most part the bot mode looks great the paint apps are certainly what surprised me in particular for this figure he's been painted really nicely in both robot and ufo mode i think the articulation for the bot mode is nicely done i would have liked to have seen some wrist rotation i think that would have made him pretty much perfect and perhaps had they found a way to have incorporated a flap so that we could have concealed the inside where the hollow forearms are but other than that a really nicely done figure i think he scales very nicely alongside some of the other deluxe releases and considering that he is slightly shorter it is really cool to see that he is very hefty 
I wasn't expecting him to be as chunky and as weighty as he actually is. So in all, certainly one of the massive highlights out of the Velocitron subline, him and Override, I know are just going to fly off the shelves as not only are they original brand new molds, but they're also very cool characters. And it is just a shame that they have been packaged under a Walmart exclusive. And if history is anything to go by, these are by far going to be some of the rarest releases that we're going to see coming out of Legacy. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought of the review. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.